Kia ora everyone, welcome back to part 3 of this page that we are doing in Country Kitchen Charm by Teresa Goodridge. This is a Creative Haven produced book and we've been working on this herb spread here with a mixture of water soluble based markers such as Crayola Super Tips. I've been using some random pale pastel brush chip pens. Um, I've got some by a brand called Unity. I've got some fine liners. So it's just a real mixture of water based markers. But today we're going to carry on. I'm going to work on the curtains and then I'm going to do some of the flowers. So I've pulled out some colours for those. But we'll start with the curtains and I'll explain how I colour the curtains which will be a similar process that I used to the walls in the last section. However, I accidentally did not have my mic on when I coloured this section last time. So we'll go into a little bit more detail this time. Um, so we're working with this combo here. We're going to work with a real mint green for our curtains. So I have two colours pulled out here. We have a very cool pale mint. And then we have a pastel green that is also on the cooler side. So I'm going to start with our pastel green. This is the darker of the two colours and is also going to act a bit as our shadow colour. I'm going to start by colouring in where the shadows would be. So here we've got two pieces of fabric that overlap. So this piece in here would be recessed behind. So we're going to colour that in. Now I'm trying to, I am working in a single stroke. I'm trying to, instead of previously like when we've done lines such as in the centre of the leaves, we've tried to do a more sketchy line like this. I am doing a straight solid line here because we want that distinction here of the overhang. So where the fabric overlaps, I'm going to tuck some in these little flower sections where the flowers shadows might be casting. Then around the curtain tie we would have a bit of a shadow. Same with up the top here, we're going to add a shadow. Got a little fold in the curtain, so we'll add in a little bit there. And same deal as before. So in some of these sections where it starts to fade out, we can also just sort of fade it out. These two ways you can work your solid line and then let it just flick out. It can be kind of hard to control. So for me, it's easier to get to a certain point and then flick a couple of times like that. It does mean you are overlapping colour, which is something I'm trying to avoid doing here. But a little bit won't be too bad. And I'm not worrying about the polka dots, I'm colouring over them because I'll go over those with Posca to bring those back out. All right, that is that side done. So now we'll do the same thing on this side. Whatever color I do, the polka dots. Maybe I should do that top part. Hmm. Gonna have to think if I want to do that top part different color or keep it the same. All right, we don't have a fold line there, but I know there'll be a fold there because of the bottom of the curtain. Same with here. Like a little bit behind.
So that indicates our folds. <clears throat> I was thinking, and I think I am going to do the top of the curtain the same colour as well. So we're just going to put a bit of shadow around each of the holes and then from the top of it as well, just to keep it consistent. Okay, now we're going to use our mint green and using the side, we're going to start filling in everything with a single pass of the colour. Again, keep your strokes in the direction that the curtain is gathering. So down here, and then here, here would be this way, and that. Follow that direction because if you do end up with streaks, it'll look like the uh, curtain has extra folds in it. We'll go sideways for the tie back. Because this is such a big area, it's very likely we to get streaks in here. So that's why we want to keep our pen matching the direction. All right, same thing over here. All right, there's our base. I like that. I like the choice of the mint. Okay, so we're going to go back to our brush marker here. And now we're going to build up those shadows a bit more. And because we've got a soft tip, we can actually almost flick and fade it out. So rather than doing a line that ends harsh like that with the tail you can start with firm pressure and then lift as you go through and it creates more of a flick and it will end it more at a point but it also fades out slightly the end as you're putting less pressure on so it can help with blending areas together anywhere that you feel like you may need to slightly darken focus around our tie <clears throat> top here
All right, back to our mint, and we're going to try and work this while it's not too dry. And again, we're going to do another pass, aiming to go all over, keeping it as smooth as possible, following the direction of the curtain in case there are any streaks. And we're going to try and have our, so here, rather than starting here, I'm going to start with the shadow area, because if it overlaps in the shadow area, it's a shadow area, it can be darker. So try to think about starting, or like, the edge of your stroke, being in an area where if it overlaps and darkens, it's going to be okay. But also, these are water soluble markers. These, it's one of those things. There's gonna be streaks. We're not going to be able to get these curtains perfect. If we wanted perfectly smooth curtains, we would be better to do it with alcohol markers. But I don't want to work with alcohol markers today. Same idea as before. Darkening up those areas again. Flicking to. Up a blend between the two. So yeah, you can see the difference between the two curtains. Just having worked over one more time, we've got a lot more depth on this side. So we're going to do the same thing over here. around some of these flowers but it might do Oops, went a bit over the line there that'll be okay it just looks like there's a bit more of a shadow on the wall Feeling a little better today. It's the next day since I filmed part two. <clears throat> Still a little bit of a off. I don't think I'm coughing as much at the moment. That could change. There we go. There's our curtains done. We're going to possibly add a little bit of grey to those just to keep it consistent with everything else, but it'll give them a moment to dry. While we do that, we can move on to our flowers. So I've chosen a bunch of pinks and purples for our flowers. I have a cooler purple, a warmer purple, and then a pink. Because I think the combination of these should look quite cool. And just help bring that colour in. We've it kind of gone for a bit of a rainbow colour palette at this point. <coughs> because we have everything else, my brain can only see it missing pink and purple. Because that's the rainbow. They're like, okay, we'll work with the rainbow. Because, you know, why not have colourful? I like colourful. So we're going to work on these two flowers here, and I'm going to use my cooler, cooler purple blend. So I'm going to start with the darker of it, and we're going to use our good old stippling technique here. So I'm going to start by stippling on the shadow areas. So right in the center where it's the darkest, I will be going quite solid. And then as it comes up, we just start dotting closer together before spreading them out and having less of them. In some areas, we're not touching at all. And the same over here. So the center overlap will make a bit darker. Fade it up.
and then with our lighter we're going to carry on and we're just going to dot the rest and now we'll leave that to dry and when that's dry we'll go back over with our lighter with a smooth coat and it should distinguish the different bits in there we may need to do another pass as per usual all right let's go for our pink and so in this one Teresa has kind of sketched in some flowers I might bring you in for this one you in slightly so you can see in here some of the different flowers that have been pre-drawn so it's still going to be kind of messy but we'll kind of work around the flowers that are there so the things that Teresa has drawn in I see this like a ball cluster of flowers and the ones that are drawn are the ones that are in front that you see clearly and the rest is just a mess behind so with our darker color we're going to work around these just <clears throat> dribble color it in if it overlaps it's quite all right because it will just build up dimension to the flowers that are behind because this is our darker color i'm going to color in here and this is going to be obviously very dark same with down here and down here And we'll just give that a moment to dry and while that's drying we'll go back to our purple with the lighter of the purple and just do a pass over the top now if you want to make the stippling even finer you could go in with a fine liner I am thinking of doing myself if I have a cooler purple. Mm, most of mine are quite warm purples, and that's <clears throat> you. What do you look like? Oh. Not bad actually. Let's keep that one out. these are the unity water-based markers these are a what's called a white label product the company just produces them and then brands will chuck their own branding on it unity is just the wee house in new zealand um, but these are very generic and i'm sure you can find any sort of equivalent out there of them use this just to add in some more deeper darker dots oh there's our purple all right onto our pink we're going to work with the lighter pink and again just a brush over the top And then I might have to take that pink and just put it over these shadow areas just because it is in all the others. There's a slight difference between the two colours without that warmer pink on top. I might just have to grab that. Deepen up some areas. Do a little quick pass over that if it's consistent. Mm. 
I have so many markers everywhere at this point. <laughs> so with our grey fine liner, I'm just going to finish off these purple flowers. This grey fine liner might even be too light. Eh, it's adding a little bit. It's not really adding a lot. Probably should pull out a slightly darker one, but we'll just work over it a couple times. So I'm just kind of like circling and stippling, kind of following the lines that Teresa's put in there. And then, because this is nice and fine, we can use this on these flowers here to indicate our shadow areas. Focusing on where the leaves overlap, the flowers overlap help build up that dimension make it look like some things are recessed we may also put little dots of posca in the middle of the flowers i will decide that at the end if i do want to do that but i sometimes do that for center of flowers just to make those little centers pop out There's our pink flowers. We actually have another type of flower down there that I didn't pull a colour out for, so I might have to figure out what colour to do there. But for now we'll use our warmer purple combo. And we will work on... Oops, sorry, I'm just going to move you guys. It's a bit easier. We're going to work on these ones here. Might use... Uh, nib side of this one we're going to start with our center and follow the lines almost like a star pattern out from the center here doing our sketchy lines it's okay if you add in some more it doesn't quite match the lines that are there this is about adding in that detail I'll give that a moment to dry and while we're waiting for that to dry I'm going to take the I think this is willow green fine liner just use that to fill in these stems that haven't quite been filled in Okay, that was a lighter purple actually. Again, full pass over the top, trying to use the side because it's got the wider edge so you can get flat colours. I'm trying to work fast so we don't get streaky. I like it. Pretty warm today, so these are drying pretty quickly. So using that same lighter purple, just going to mimic around the star center and also use it for any overlap or any shadows that we need to go into so here the flower has a little overlap so we'll darken that edge this will just help create the illusion that the flowers are coming inwards
we've got a petal at the back there and we'll just show you a little bit up here <coughs> and there we go there's our purple flowers okay now we need to decide it's the time to decide if I'm going to do wood for those shells and I think I will because I think that will help tone it together see if I can find my wood colours in all this chaos I think it's these three oh right where are you and then I just over the top maybe there's the original there but yes that is the lighter ah, you can tell my hands aren't too great again okay yep no that was the colors cool this is quite, quite handy to have a test sheet let me zoom you out slightly because i will forget to zoom you out while i'm <laughs> working on these shells it is a very classic me thing to do Okay, so since we're going to carry on with the wood up there, I'm going to start by, hmm, for here, for here we've got the shelf that we can see plus the little lip, shelf but the little lip we can see. Here it kind of looks like we see the lip in the underside to me, like that's how I read this, because of the height, um, because like our horizon line is here, and then we start seeing it come this way. So because of that, this top shelf is going to be slightly different. So we'll do an overhang shadow. And then we're going to flick it in from the sides. And then here on these shelves where we do see part of the shelf we're going to start by working around the pots um, again we'll flick it in from the side look at these top parts too so working in linear horizontal lines sorry because that's the way our wood grain's going to go. So we want to keep all our lines horizontal as much as we can. And we'll do the same deal down here. We'll shadow around the pot. And from the sides. Do we? I think we will. It's probably, again, the lighting on this page isn't the most accurate, but I think it will help if we just bring the shadow down a bit onto the front lip. Haven't really got consistent lighting on the page, so it'd be a lot better if I had actually done that properly, but that's okay. Sometimes, sometimes I don't want to think about lighting and I just want to go for it. <laughs> and it still looks good. Like, we've still got shadows and tones in there. It's just our lighting source is not consistent. So it's never going to look quite 100% right. Oop, not lighter colour yet. We're going to take our brown fine liner and use it to add in some green. Now keep in mind that the shelf is quite a bit smaller than down here, so you're not necessarily going to see as much grain or texture of the wood because it is smaller and more in the distance, so your eye would probably blur a lot of this. But I like to add in a little bit. I just feel like it helps define that it's, you know, wood and not just a brown shelf. This colour does disappear on the darker tones pretty much so I haven't gone too bad on the darker tones I also just overlap there a bit it's fine if I need to I can put a posca dot there to hide it up all right and then with our lighter tone is our lighter one no that's our dark one good thing I checked that's our lighter one <laughs> 
we're just going to do our flat pass. And just extend around the shadows a bit. Okay, but back to our purple flowers. We just got a little bit of grey to do. I'm going to use the fine liner again just because it's such tiny areas. Making sure our overlaps are defined. And I'm just going to put a little dot in the center basically to really increase that depth down. Sort of focus on making sure our overlaps are also distinguished. All right, so now we've just got one flower left to color, which I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll do yellow as well. Maybe we'll do yellow for the pot. Hmm. Oh, I know what we can do. One more wood texture. Yep, I had to pick up the right colors. <laughs> Same as before. You start by doing some lines. And I'm going to concentrate on also making sure we've got darker on the top and bottom because that'll also help create that 3D effect of a round pole. Very, very carefully. You may wish to use a ruler, especially for this top and bottom one. And then we'll make sure that we've also got a shadow on the back side from each of these rings. Back to our fine liner. we go this is dry enough so we're just going to right under each of the plants where the shadow would be the darkest along with a little bit of gray
Not really on that edge, though. Put it on the side. Maybe on the other side here. Mm. Okay. I'm going to take a little break here and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, a little, a little break. Now we're going to carry on. So I'm going to start working on some of the pots and bits and pieces around, getting into some of those finishing details now. So I'm going to start with the pot down here, which I'm going to do the same pink as the flowers up here. At this point, a lot of my color choices are going to try and reflect colors that are already on the page. So since we already have this pink used here, I'm also going to bring it down here. And I am thinking that if I want to just color the whole thing pink and then go over the outline like it's a line image rather than an individual design or if I want to color the design. And I think I'm leaning towards just going over the image afterwards with a Posca to create like a line effect. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our dark colour. should actually move my microphone closer to me. And I do apologise if you hear metal slamming in the background. The roof is uh, just about finished and they're just cleaning up and picking up all the old roof pieces that they threw down when they were installing the new roof. Then we just have to get the scaffolders back to take all the scaffolding down and they have to remove the power sleeve that they put to protect the power coming to the house from the line so nobody got hurt and then that's all done and it will be very nice <laughs> very noisy getting a roof done but it had to be done all right so i've just colored in the back here i did a flat layer and then just added in some additional shading to deepen it I'm going to do the handle and I'm going to do about half the handle just to create the illusion of a curve. I'm going to do the bottom here and then I'm going to start bringing it up and do a little feathering technique. I'm going to focus this around the sides because we want to create the illusion that this is a 3D shape. We'll have it darker towards the bottom and then that'll curve up. And then it would recede in here a little bit. So we'll bring it in a bit before it flays back out for the top of the jug. Then we've got our lighter pink again, so we're just going to work over everything here. Working fast to try and avoid streakies. And we'll just extend those shadows that we put in. You can see it is these pens do it in particular do like to chew up the paper a little bit. Um, that is because I've just worked wet on wet. If you're working more dry, it does tend to help a little bit. But at a certain point, you are just going to be scrubbing the paper. And I notice with the brush markers, it happens a lot more. Um, I do it a bit less with the Crayola Super Tips, but it still happens with the Super Tips. So just be aware it's getting too much just stop and let the paper dry and then when you work on top try not to do anything that involves scrubbing or like flicking you're just gonna have to work pointillism because the thinner the paper the more the ink will spread as well it's kind of weak when it's wet so that's why we like to give it a moment to dry sometimes all right so in terms of the pots I was thinking maybe we'll bring in some of the oranges and reds around here, but I don't know if I want to do that or just do all the pots grey. Just keep them quite neutral. I do want to bring this orange or red somewhere else. Like it needs to be used somewhere else. 
pick this right now. It's just down here. So your eye is being immediately drawn here because this is the only area of the orange. So if we did bring out the orange and the red in here, it's going to just help balance the page a little bit. Like before, this was our only pink, so it brought your eye here as well because it was the only pink. Now it's a little bit more balanced because we've got pink down here. So to help balance the page, I do need to bring orange up there. So I think we will do some orangey pots. Let's get our orange tones. And yes, we're still going to put some grey on there, but I'm going to leave that to dry. Um, we'll start with our dark. We're going to focus on making more the centre dark and the outsides lighter. Um, I just put a dot of orange there, so I guess we're I'm just thinking, do I just colour that orange or... No, we might do that yellow actually, like the warm orange yellow. Me just changing my mind <laughs> in the middle of doing it. Honestly, the colour choices is usually what takes me the longest time figuring out the colours. So this is where using colours that are already on the page is also handy because you already have the colours. So with these pots, because our dark is in the centre, I'm colouring one half flat and colouring into the other half. And where it overlaps, it's in our darkest area, so it actually doesn't matter if it like overlaps and darkens because it's already our darkest area. So I've also got a cat here on here. Shadows here. Loves to get everywhere. I think I'm also going to do little rim orange I've, I haven't coloured the rims on this half and then coloured the rims on the other half so we better colour those and then I think we'll do the little zigzaggy bit yellow and then I can pull out a posca if I want to make those lines more prominent or something give that a moment to dry I think this is the orangey yellow it is Uh, colour that flat for now. <clears throat> While we wait for that all to dry, we'll go back to our pink and we'll just work in our grey to really amplify up those shadows. So I've just done the back of the handle. I'm just going to do a bit at the bottom of the jug here. And I am stippling it here. Because again, we don't want to scrub with this paper right now because it's being lifted too much. Just a little bit of shadow there. Dark orange, and I'm just going to re darken those centers and also just darken the center of the top orange rim that we added in. Oh, and with our light orange, we'll then extend out our shadow and blend that in. And then I'm going to do a little bit of this darker orange in the centre, a uh, lighter orange, sorry. And then while it's still wet, get out our yellow and blend that together. Oh, 
these out orange pots. Alright, I think we'll follow that same logic. We'll use the dark red in the centre here because I think that'll go quite lovely with the purple and pink flowers. And then we can do our brighter red down here. I think that would look quite nice. Mm. So these are darker, our grape colours. Now this one I had to work in a specific order just to make sure the colours start the same. So we're going to start with a flat layer of our burnt burgundy style red. Probably should be shading the other way, following the curve of the pot so the lines match. If there's any streakiness, but we'll work over this with a couple of layers, so it'll be okay. Yeah. So much marker on my fingertips. <laughs> <clears throat> Same idea with our centers. We're going to darken those again. And the back of the pot. Hello, Shido. Hello, kitty. No, oh, you've been playing in the bush. You've got bush furs all over you. <laughs> all right. And then with our darker purple, we're just going to add in our really dark areas. Just a little bit. I see you, Shadow. Come here. Oh, apologies. The cat insists on cuddles. I'm trying not to have him climb all over the artwork, but knowing him, he's going to want to try and help colour. This is not part of the video tutorial. We don't want... <laughs> You're not helping, cat. <laughs> Come on. You mean to stay up on me. You know this. Oh, gosh. Come on, come on off the artwork, please. Ooh, thank you. Settle down. Settle down. Good cat. Good kitty. Okay. So hopefully Shadow will let me colour. <laughs> I now have a cat in my pathway. But we're going to work with this burgundy again. And we'll use this to... Blend out these shadows. Oh, that hit. No, shadow. Alright, alright. Well, let's get you some treats and then you might leave me alone. Come on, down here. Come on, you can jump down. Here you go. All right. <laughs> A little bit of bribery. <laughs> oh. It will be, I'm still in the middle of unpacking and sorting. So right now, when he jumps up on my desk, there's not a lot of area for him right now. But 
when I get a few more things figured out for a location to go into, it's going to be a bit better because he'll actually have an area to go to. And I do want to get like a little cat bed or he likes soft fluffy things. He loves my blanket hoodies and woolen blankets and stuff like that to sleep on. So I do want to set up a little area that he can go and just lay in and train him that it's okay for him to just jump up there. Because right now the only area that's really free on the desk is the area with all my colouring. Right, so I'm just going to extend out this pink a little bit too. Because it's looking really burnt red brown and that's not quite what I want. I don't mind a little touch of it, but we want to have it a bit more on the pinky side. He's happy now, he's had some treats. <laughs> uh, I've been, I have been working to train him that, you know, he's allowed to come in here, he's allowed to cuddle up on my bed, that sort of thing, because my mum is actually quite highly allergic to cats and was told by her dermatologist that she should really get rid of her cat. She's like, well, absolutely not, but, you know, things that we can do to make it easier for her is train Shadow not to sleep on her bed. So I've been trying to train him to sleep on my bed since he's used to sleeping on a bed. And yeah, he spent the last few nights sleeping in my bed, so he's being trained. Mum's joking, he's becoming my cat now. <laughs> Actually, no, we're going to need to leave that to dry for a while because that's got quite a bit of ink in there. So we'll leave that to dry. We'll do all the grey at the end because still got to do the orange as well. So in the meantime, we could look at some red. Hmm. I don't think I put away any of the colours. Maybe I did. I feel like I had... Here's my little red sample. Or not you. Hmm. Did I put away the reds? Maybe I did. Again, there's a lot of stuff on the desk. <laughs> Does not help. I was trying to avoid putting away any colours that I might have used. because no, you do dry to that and then you're that what did I use for the darker red maybe I just went over it again we'll try that I can always bring in some of the burgundy if I really need to go dark dark red oh that's right I ended up using a fine liner that's the main thing I did I remember now. I could also just go and watch the previous part as well. That would be logical. Again, I am just working over the pattern of the pot. I will probably bring those out with Posca. Just because it's easier. I could sit there and pedantically colour around it, but I'm also lazy. a little bit outside the pot there it's okay we'll make it work when we come to do outside the windows
Okay, so give that a moment to dry and then we'll go in with our grey. Hmm. I think this is a lighter wood colour, it is. And then... A little on the yellow side, with the actual wool. Actually, the wall colour works quite well. Okay. So for these signs, I'm going to use a super pale yellow and then actually the peach that we used on the walls. And some of these I accidentally pre-coloured in with the greens of the leaves and stuff like that. It's fine. Actually, I think the bullet tip will be better. Colour in all the sticks that are holding them in place. And then switch back to the brush side. Just do almost like a little L across the corner. Just fade it out slightly with the pale yellow. Boom! Cool. By the time we get down there, these should all be good. Just adding in our shadow. I'm just doing under the rim bottom where it's closest to the shelf here we also need to do the bits at the back under that rim and then we'll do inside this rim here too and then of course overlap from the leaves And then same down here, we'll have some overlap and these back bits. Also going to do in here where it goes to plant shadow. All right, pots are done. Yeah, I think we will do yellowy orange for these flowers here. So we've got our orange yellow. I uh, know this is a bright yellow. Let's have a quick look. Very, very similar colours. And then bright yellow. Okay. For our flowers here, we're just going to do stipples. I'm starting with the darkest. Just stippling it in. Okay. 
one's quite far back, so it'll be a bit darker. While we wait for that to dry for a second, take our dark brown from our wood. We'll just use that to quickly shade in the actual twig part. You can go in with a fine liner to try and add shadows and stuff to these sticks, but honestly, they're so tiny, you probably won't see too much of a difference. Alright, next colour, slightly lighter. More dots. Focusing on the darker side and then fading them up. bright yellow coloring the whole thing Okay, now for this vase jug. I think we might pull down the cooler purples that we use for the flowers up here. Be a good contrast and bring that down. Plus it's got a couple of blue tones in it that I think will work quite well. So again, we've got some highlights pre-drawn in here. I'll probably ignore those and add them in myself later. I have a bit of a shadow from this handle. Shadow from here. Give that a second to dry, and then we'll go in. I'm going to use the grey fine liner to do our shadows, because I can also almost stipple with it, or just do little scribble lines with it. And then with our lighter purple. Following the verticalness of the jug so that any streakiness just looks like the light reflecting off a shiny jug. So I'm just kind of streaking it, just working the darker purple out of it, fading it. Oh, and with a grey fine liner, I'm just going to colour in these little bits here. There's our jug. 
just got to go over that with the gray then the last thing i want to do is color this and i think what i actually want to do here is do a baby blue so not quite the blue of the frame but the lighter blues now i have a couple of pale blues in this set this one works more with the toning of that as pretty as this one is i want more of that warmer blue and where did our pale go from doing the frame are you are pale you are so it's quite a stark contrast between the two but i think it'll work all right and then the other thing that we're going to want for this brush or oh, basket is a fine liner simply by the pale blue hello shadow i see you Unfortunately, you're on the side that if I give you scratches, you're using my colouring hand. So, I can't give you scratches in colour, Shadow. Alright. I'm trying to film a video here. <laughs> Uh, he's adorable he's just very clingy <laughs> likes his cuddles and his scratches mostly his scratches okie dokie so so with the basket we have a lot of areas where fine details kind of going to help give the texture of the basket so with our darker shade I'm going to start by just indicating shadows so like this top edge would be casting a shadow down onto the basket and then down the bottom here it wouldn't be getting as much light so there'd definitely be a bit of a shadow down here as well fortunately every time I talk about light and shadow shadow thinks I'm talking about him <laughs> and then same with these little edges that define each of the little weaves of the basket I guess I don't know technical terms but And then where these these distinct ones that Teresa has drawn for us will create shadows under them. And then on the top each one of these and the line so I'm just doing a smooth line here where we get all these shadows in place Okay, now we're going to take our fine liner. And so, following the, for the top of the basket, following the shape of this curve, just like we did with the wood, we're going to draw in the different fibers for this basket. To me, it looks like sort of like a woven cane basket, or I think that's what they're called. I don't know, but I can see the style of it, so. They have a lot of like, I'm sure it's cane or wicker basket. 
I've got one that I keep all my technology and like all my extra cords and stuff like that for the computer. Very handy. And then we're going to follow the lines that Teresa has indicated for us here. Just add in some more. Oh, I haven't done any of the vertical ones. We'll do the vertical ones afterwards. I'll just finish all the horizontal ones. Okay, and we'll just give that a minute to dry and then we'll come in and lay over our light blue. So while we wait for that to dry, we might as well do our grey over here. So we're going to darken the centre bottom. I'm just going to cover up that purple that I spread over a bit by just extending the shadow on the wood. We want a bit of one under here, under the handle the back of the pot all right so nice flat layer of our light blue to bring it all together And we've just got to put a little bit of grey on that. But while we wait for that, let's quickly knock out these golden rings. Because they aren't too hard to knock out, really. That colour. So I've got a golden yellow. I'm just going to colour the whole thing. I'm going to take our dark brown that we used in the wood and stipple that up and also from this side as well I'll create that 3D and using our yellow Blend it together. Working very wet here. We're not giving it a chance to dry because we want to bleed it together. Which is why we're also going to take our grey. Do that on our darkest areas. We'll do the same on the other side.
<clears throat> All right, and then just with our grey, I'm just going to deepen the bottom, particularly those recessed back bits. And under the top here. A little bit coming from the edge here where it goes behind the fruit. And there we go. There is our part three all complete. This is where we will leave it for this part. We are definitely nearly there because we just have the background and finishing details to go. So next part we will wrap this up entirely. I hope you've been enjoying this series. If you have, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already, click that subscribe button. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that was like a teenage voice break there. Yeah, I need to go and great make myself a cup of tea, as you might be able to hear. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. There we go. To see the next part. And make sure you take care of yourself out there. I hope you go and hydrate in some form as well, as I am going to do. Much adaha to you all. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next part. Bye.